Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about why you should go to the Eldrick Moon pre-release as well as give you some tips and advice what to do. But before we begin, the best tip I can give you is just have fun. Just have fun in the pre-release. Don't worry about winning and um, don't worry about... Uh, don't make it a bad time for yourself. You're there to have fun with people who also like magic. And don't make it a bad time for someone else that you're playing with. I've had plenty of experiences, very poor experiences where you know, as if the opponent was just slightly happier or less, you know, abrasive, it does make a big difference, especially when you're all in the same community. I mean, you pretty much live all in the same area and you probably will see each other at events. So having even be if you even if you're extremely competitive and you're really a grinder type of individual, just take off pre-release. Just hey, say, hey, pre-release is just for fun. I'm going to meet some new people, I'm going to hang out. One of the traditions we have our pre-release is we always go out to eat um, before. So I would show up a little earlier and we go out to Chili's, the infamous Chili's, right? Uh, <laughs> you're right next to the store. It's walkable, but I mean, people are so lazy they drive to it. It's in the same um, strip mall, but it's like really, it's probably five minutes away from a walk. But I've had people say, hey, I'm going to drive to Chili's. Magic players, right? Anyway, uh, one of the biggest things um, to think about when you're making is to, when you're going to pre-release, look at the cards. Look at the cards that you might be getting. Look at the archetypes. Do I'm not saying study everything like you're trying to win a PT, but at least have a basic understanding of the game because it makes it a lot faster. It makes your deck building better. And from my opponent standpoint, I don't want to... You know, I don't want an opponent who reads like every single card they have and every single card I have and just takes you know a long time. I would rather have a faster game and then just hang out afterwards and talk. One of the biggest takeaways I've had is when you after you play someone, hey, just hang out with that person. Even if you're with your friends, uh, making new friends or new magic friends and is important i mean it's definitely part of a community and that's why you're there at pre-release is because you want to be part of this community otherwise you could just play magic online all the time people right people are important um you, those are the same people who might go to your friday night magic if they feel comfortable they are the same people who by geographic region could attend other events with you could be your trade partners could be uh your friends so that's my biggest advice i have a Good story I have from Groovy Gecko from, uh, in grad school. Devin, Gavin, Mark, and a few other people. We went to pre-release, and you're seeing all these real regulars with locals, and then the non-locals come in because it's a bigger event, and the more casual players come in. You have to treat them with um, decency, common decency, not be mad if you lose, because you will lose, because mana screws happens, having bad sealed pool happens, and just presenting your community, because you're a local and you're representing this community of when people come in and they see a bunch of people sitting to each other, you assume, oh, hey, these are people who play together every week, and they're not incorrect in assessing that statement, but you want to bring them in because that's how you grow your community. If you are very in Groovy Geckos, um, and that time is my mistake too, so I take fault for that. We were very include, exclusive, meaning we did not include people. And that was a mistake because then the community died, not enough people supported the store, and then the store went bankrupt, and now no one has a store. So doing your job as a, if you are a local, doing your job as a local to promote your store and your community and to make it seem like a really cool place. and. Bring those casual players to Friday Night Magic. The more people who are playing, the better it is for everyone. You don't want to go to a store and like there's four people and it's the same four people every single time. You need new people. You need new blood into the store and that's healthy because if one of those four or two of those four people move away and they no longer can play, I mean, what are you? how are you going to replace them? You need to always keep promoting your community and growing your community. That's of the utmost importance in my opinion. Now if you're non-local, yeah, hopefully the locals are really nice and that's on them. You know, that's definitely on the people who regularly play at that shop to be nice and to talk and hang out. You know, do I would heavily suggest 
Um, I would not suggest bring a trade binder and definitely not any valuable cards because you will get shark to oblivion. And that's something that just happened. It happens. Like I wish it doesn't or didn't, but it does. If you are a local, uh, use tokens. The tokens in your playmat, that is a very easy thing to talk about, right? Hey, I love your playmat. Hey, do you like this show? This is an anime show. Do you like these tokens? It is a very easy way to get involved. If you have an ED8 stack, bring your ED8 stack. If you have a modern deck, bring your bring. Don't bring your whole Magic collection with you to pre-release. It's not necessary. But bring a deck of your favorite format, and then slash having a play mat and having some sleeves or tokens, which really show your other interests, which might be nerdier. I actually gave a speech about nerdy interest on Houston Social Media Day, and it went well. So be proud to be a nerd, right? Anyway, that's about it. That's my best advice. Definitely, if you want to watch an older video, I have older videos about bread, which is how you go ahead and win. You need bombs. R is removal. E is, huh, I don't know what E is. A is aggro and D is dreads or the rest of the dregs or the rest of the remaining cards that kind of make up playables. So yeah, I mean, bread is definitely the way to go. So bombs, always play your bombs if you, they are on color. Always play removal, even if it's really expensive because you're trying to respond normally to someone else's bomb if you cannot respond to. If you, the first person who plays a bomb card, which is a card that is pushed power level wise for limited or unsealed, uh, will win unless that other opponent has a removal for that card. And it's a back and forth and back and forth. Aggro is the exception. Aggro is kind of this out there. If you win fast enough, like a 1-1 one -one with haste for one red, that might be good enough because your opponent might not have anything to do for a while and you're just hitting your opponent over and over again and you get your value of a lightning bolt of value from that 1-1 one -one, and you get to keep the 1-1. One -one. That's how you win with aggro is you just attack, 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 and you don't really care about what happens to your cart. Because if you did, then you're probably playing the wrong deck. For aggro at least. So there's videos on my channel about that. You can just watch one of those videos. I did want to make a video and face talking about um, pre-release and how to enjoy it and what you should do and definitely tell locals that hey, you are somewhat responsible for building your community up because if you don't it will go away like ruby geckos went away anyway bye guys